I have the pleasure of introducing you to not just an actress, but she's a writer, she's a producer, she's also a doctoral candidate. Please help me welcome the wonderful, the talented, award-winning, outstanding Ruth Livier. Uh, the first thing I want to ask you is, what made you decide to act? I don't know that it was a decision. It was just something that I felt like I needed to do since elementary school. It was something that I was like, that's something that I want to do. I love stories. I love characters. I started doing theater in Guadalajara. It's, that's where I'm, I'm from originally. And there, the plays that we did that were very socially oriented, they were always really about something very meaningful, no? holding up a mirror to society. Um, so I come from that sort of training where it's about being an artist. Mm -hmm. It's full artist. Yeah, I guess just the love of stories and wanting to be make an impact in society and what way to do that. I mean, better way than through the arts. So uh, I had a kind of like a back and forth and I went back. I did La Secundaria in Mexico. Then I came back and I finished high school here. Um, so yeah, I came back when I was like in the middle of high school. I liked being in Mexico, pero you know, diferente. It was different. Where did you settle in when you guys came at 15? What, what part of America did you come to? San Diego County. Oh, okay. So you were in San Diego. And what made you move to Los Angeles to pursue acting? See, so I graduated high school early, and at that point I was like, either I go straight to uh, college or I pursue my acting dream. I figured I should pursue acting first. I saved up a little bit of money. I was holding two jobs and I moved to LA. I think I was 19. Um, I had never been to LA. So I just kind of went, well, yeah, maybe que pasa, right? In 19, I have no idea. I'm like, so let's see what happens. Came here without knowing anybody and uh, except for my agent. The first things that I needed to do was to find uh, community college, so I would have some grounding, continue going to school, a theater company, and a job, right? So I needed those things. So I went to LA Valley College to para inscribirme, and there I met the student, and we were just talking. I was looking for a place to live. I didn't have a place to live yet. He's like, I have a friend who rents out room to student rooms to students, so I ended up renting a room from this woman in Van Nuys. Everyone else there spoke, um, I think it was Taiwanese. So, nunca nos, so, wow. but they were, and, <laughs> nunca nos podíamos entender bien. But they were so super sweet that, you know, we didn't really need the language. We we got each other's energy and it, it was, yeah, it was very sweet. So I was there, that was, that's how I started. Okay, yeah. and so you mentioned a theater company. Uh, how did you know to go look for a theater company? Well, I had done theater in Guadalajara. Okay. So I come from theater, it, that's where I started. So I knew that I needed that grounding and, and that I wanted to be a part of a company. So I opened Backstage West at that point. And um, most of what I saw were um, romantic comedies, but there was one theater company that I found that was doing a play, uh, De Donde, I forget the, the play right now, but the play is De Donde. And it was Friends and Artists Theater Company in um, in Los Feliz. It was about social messages and social issues, border issues. And I was like, con ellos, that's where I want to go. That's where I belong. <laughs> so I went, I said, I'm here. I want to do props. I want to do anything. Just take me. I want to be a part of like this group. Because I, I really love the show that you're doing and what you stand for. That's where I started. I, I, I stayed. Greg Cruz was in the play. Uh, Peggy Medina was in the play. Jaime Ferrari was in the play like all of these people that are still my friends going to that theater company and volunteering to do props was the best thing that I ever did so my first acting gig ended up being understudying for Peggy Medina and so through the theater company were you able to then start networking and learning about the business to kind of help you because I'm sure that the business in Guadalajara is very different from Los Angeles I was very fortunate to land in that theater company with those artists and amazing human beings. And then at one point, one of the actors there, uh, my friend John Simpson, he was working as an assistant for an executive producer at Universal. One of the uh, producers there was looking for a new assistant. And for some reason, he just thought maybe I would be a good fit. So he said, hey, they're interviewing for this job to be an assistant. 
um, at Universal TV. I guess I called. No me acuerdo cómo fue. fue. But anyway, I got this interview because of John. I showed up to the interview and the producer's like, where's your resume? I'm like, I didn't know I needed one. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. I'm just here because somebody was looking for an assistant. I guess he liked me. I got the job there. So I started working as an assistant, um, as, a, as a PA, production assistant. The executive assistant knew I wanted to act. She took me to the casting director of the TV show, said, Ruth wants to be an actress. And the casting director's like, Can you do monologue for me? So I did a monologue. And I guess she said, Girls got talent, so she called an agent friend of her friend of hers, and that's how I got my agent. So, that's awesome. Yeah. That's, so that's awesome. What are a couple of things that you learned as an assistant that was able to help you as an actor? I guess just understanding how the behind the scenes work and being comfortable with that process, I guess made me feel comfortable about what I was getting into. Entendiéndole más as somebody who came from like nothing to do with any of this world except watching TV, right? Um, so I think it gave me that sense of comfort with that. Also, at one point, the producer wanted me to uh, continue with him as his uh, executive assistant to continue to move forward. And I, I, I decided that if I stayed and I started to make more money, then I would not probably pursue my acting dream. So there came a point where I was, you know, I was like, no, tengo, tengo que actuar. So at the same time that it gave me a behind the scenes look, I think it also uh, solidified that acting was really what I wanted to, to pursue at that time. What I love about you is how versatile you are. Because you not only do film and television and commercials, but you do theater. You also do voiceovers. How did you get guided into doing voiceover? I booked a commercial campaign. And the campaign included TV commercials and radio commercials. This was one of the, when, when these campaigns existed more. You know, había mucho right. en ese entonces. Este, so I got into voiceover through this campaign. And my friend este, Gustavo Rex played the announcer for the radio spots. And he recommended me to my first voiceover agent. That's how I got started into voiceover. So I guess the moral of the story is having friends in the business and just being a part of it. It was through my friend's recommendations that I was able to figure my way through LA. You have booked a lot of work throughout the years, you know, like your body of work is pretty consistent in that you've been very uh, fortunate in that you've worked. You know, it, it, you see there are a lot of talented actors out there. They may work one year and then it's dry for another four or five years and then they might get another little job and that's it. But you have been able to really sustain yourself as an actor. What was your mindset when you first came out here and when you you started working as an actor? Did, did you feel like your thinking process was was that of success? Like, I'm, I'm doing this? Well, I didn't have a plan B, right? So to me, it never dawned on me that maybe this was something that I couldn't do or wouldn't work out. Like, I just, it never occurred to me. So I guess, yes, what you're, what you're saying exactly, my mindset, my mindset was, this is what I'm going to do, and it's going to work out, period, right? This is, this is it. But I think it's also was very helpful, this um, diversifying, right? It, some years were better for television, and some years I was doing a film. Other years, commercial sustained me. Other years, theater uh, have, has sustained me. So it's really been a matter of being, a, and, and then in English and in Spanish, so being able to navigate all these different arenas um, in these two different languages has definitely been helpful. Your versatility. It, uh, that's what I keep hearing. It's the versatility and it's the flexibility to, mm -hmm. to go, okay, I'll do this. Okay, I'll do this. So far, what you're saying is that you were saying yes to everything. Yeah, a commercial, a, a TV show, a theater. Yeah, absolutely. What made you think 
you know what? I should take some acting classes. Well, I had always been taking acting classes. Like when I was at the theater in Guadalajara, it was like acting workshops. And you do the workshops and then you would do the play. You know, the same thing at, at the theater. I, I studied with Sal Romeo over at Friends and Artists. Y también, if you're not like working all the time, you need to exercise those muscles, right? So it's like anything else. Uh, like an athlete, you have a coach. As an actor, you, you have your acting teachers and your coaches and, and the network of other actors and friends, right? So that sub support system that comes with being in a class or in a theater company, también is like super important. What made you decide to go to the, um, Beverly Hills Playhouse to, to study. My friend Jaime, Jaime Ferrer. He was studying there. I believe that's how it, ha it happened. He's going to call me and he's going to go, Ruth, que mentirosa eres, but I think this is how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's because of Jaime, and, and that's how I learned about the Playhouse, and I studied there for a couple of years, yeah. The Beverly Hills Playhouse is very pre was very prestigious. I can't speak about it now, but back in the day, it was one of the top um, acting schools. You had mm -hmm. Milton Catellus and Jeffrey Tambor and, and um, I believe Richard Lawson was also uh, teaching he, there at, at some point. No, because see, I didn't study with him. I studied with Gloria Gifford. I también con Milton, with Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. What technique or what tools did you get from that uh, school that you still use today? Este, la disciplina, ¿no? Esta es una de las cosas muy importantes, tener la disciplina, to do the work, to take responsibility for the work, and how important it is to have these relationships that I talked about earlier as well. And I have friendships que quedaron desde entonces también, right? This was a, a while ago that I studied there at the Playhouse, but um, yeah, there were some really great actors in that in that class for sure. Taking responsibility for your work. Right. Uh, break that down for me. You're responsible for taking care of work, right? You have to do your homework. You can't just show up and expect it to caiga del cielo somehow. You have to know how to study, how to like break down a script, how to get into a character and take responsibility for your part of the process, right? We're not in control of um, how many auditions we get. We're not in control of other systemic issues that come into play. But we, what we do have control over is our part of the work, right? Coming prepared uh, when you go to an audition, when you go to work, right? Um, so then with that preparation, then when you arrive, then you can play freely, right? I love it. I, I think too many actors don't follow that. They don't take responsibility. They don't do the work. They expect it to just be handed to them. That's how it is. You know, they audition um, where they're, they're going in reading. There, mm. there is no preparation. There is no, let me break down the script. What, you know, what does this character want? How, what am I trying to get from this person? Where am I? You know, the basic the basic questions that you ask in acting. A lot of times you have actors come in lazy and they just read the lines. Like, mm -hmm. that's enough. So uh, so I, I wanted to just cover that because that's so loaded to be responsible for your work. I'm still feeding off of that, uh, that little phrase you said because a lot of times actors get into their feelings. They're feeling, but they're not being responsible. You know, they're feeling like, oh, it was terrible. Oh, it was this. But it's like, what is your part in it? So I, I love how you you unpack that for us. It's, it's really necessary. You have done some wonderful uh, television work. You did Beverly Hills 90210, which was revolutionary in that here's a Latina playing a white girl's half-sister. What was that like for you? We had four callbacks I remember I remember that for that particular role there were like a lot of callbacks is they and just the process of getting to be on a show that was like so huge at the time and to have this recurring role as one of the main characters half sister that was a lot of fun so then when I went to do another when I went to Canada afterwards to do another recurring on a show me acuerdo that was the first time that little girls right at this more like international scale, I guess, we're like, 
we know you're from 90210. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> right? That was like early on for me. So it was kind of like a little bizarre and fun. When you got Resurrection Boulevard, how did that change your life as an actor? Because now you're a regular on a TV show. You go from being in a very well-known show like Beverly Hills 90210. Now you are on a series and it's a breakthrough series because we haven't really seen a series like that, a dramatic series with Latinos about Latinos. See, si, created by a Latino, is the executive producer, um, Jesus Trevino, uh, our director, and we had so many different directors as they come through, having so many Latinos in front of and behind the cameras and that whole process was just amazing. I think that si, um, Resurrection Boulevard was the first one hour drama is the featuring a Latino family in, in in US TV history, which I was surprised, right? I guess I shouldn't be so surprised, but I was surprised that it had taken that long. Like I was surprised that we were like, really for show? It just, pero que bueno, no? It was an amazing experience is the see to, to have a home to go to is the, to work every day. Um, instead of driving around town for auditions was, was pretty nice and the people I got to work with I mean what was the shift for you as an actor because that's a big shift you go from mm -hmm. uh, doing guest stars on TV shows and maybe maybe you're lucky and you get recurring on you know on a couple of uh, TV shows but now you are it, you are actually in the main cast there seems to me that there's a shift a, a, a mind shift as well as maybe a comfortability shift well the work is the work right you do you do the work except now you're doing it every day and you will get to do this for months on end which is great is they i think we had like 22 episodes 24 episodes per season right for we had three seasons is this so that part of it to have to have the time to develop because right, as a guest star or recurring, you show up and it's somebody else's set. Um, but to have that experience of going to work to develop more like a, I guess like a theater company, right? To have that time to develop these relationships with your fellow actors and with the crew, uh, with the writers, with the producers, is the, it's, uh, and we had a really nice family, um, you know, acting and behind the scenes también. Y que hubiera tanto Latino. Este, throughout the process, that was also very uh, unique and uh, welcomed. Este, so that part of it, and in terms of comfort, yeah, it was nice to be able to afford a house, right? <laughs> so that wasn't uh, that wasn't too shabby. So not just that, but to be able to help our families, right? Because we come from uh, very humble beginnings, very humble places. So I actually think that that was very key. What do you do to fill your creative well? Being around um, other creative folks, like really me llena. You know, that's one of the ways where I get inspired uh, to be around other artists and other creative folks. I think that's one of the things that, especially during the pandemic, right, that I'm like, oh my God, I need to be around my actor friends and my writer friends and being a part of these conversations. Is that the other day I was able to, I, I, I got invited to go to South Coast Repertory to read a script by Jose Cruz Gonzalez and to just sit around um, the rehearsal room, workshopping this, reading the script and asking all these questions and workshopping at this fundamental, you know, this level where he's still developing the story is like such a creative process that I miss that so, so much. So I can't wait to get out there more and to be able to do more of that just to be around these conversations with like creative people who are thinking about, you know, the stories and so forth. Like my writer's group is there where these folks are like writing these scripts and I get to read their scripts and give them notes on their scripts and to like 
be in conversation with them, that definitivamente me llena muchísimo. What is something that you would want the viewer to know about acting? Acting is a craft. In some circles, I think sometimes there's this idea that anybody can do it and it doesn't take anything to be an actor. Nothing could be further from the truth when you are an actor and you know the commitment that it takes and how the bravery that it takes to choose this career, to decide to do this um, as a lifestyle. I've gotten to appreciate it even more so being in academia to, you know, say it just has become so clear mm -hmm. how much of a craft and how passionate and intelligent and brave actors are. So I guess I'm talking more about actors than I am about the craft That's of okay. acting. But acting is a craft and it's a process and you need to continue to develop those muscles um, when you do that work and you need to protect it. How do you protect it? I stay away from uh, negativity. I, I spend time with people who are creative and are doing interesting things and are in that space of creating and collaborating. So that's, I think, a very important, for me, important way of uh, protecting not only what I do, but, but who I am. I want to unpack that just a little bit because that is so crucial. It goes back to your mindset. You want to have people around you that encourage you, build you up, that can um, give you critiques, but not criticism. Right, it's very different. Right, because that's what I'm hearing you say when you're in that company, it fills you. It fills you creatively. Your brain is on fire with so many good thoughts and, and good ideas, and, and it almost makes you feel like a superhero. At least that's how I see it. It's like when you are around the right creative forces, you become a superhero because you're able creatively to go into areas that you didn't even think you could go. But, but because you're in this space, it's like, oh my God, yes, let's do it, let's go. It goes with your acting. It was about, yes, I can act in English, I can act in Spanish, I can act in front of a camera, I can act in a theater, I can act, uh, I can do voiceover work, I can create my own stuff. It is that community of, of creativity that constantly feeds you the yes. Do you want to do Streetcar Named Desire? Yes. You want to play Glass Menagerie? Yes. It's not, but you can't do that because you're Latina. Because unfortunately, sometimes the creative groups we get into are not by accident. We, we get into groups because of our mindset. You know, if we're somewhere and it stinks and we don't smell it, that says a lot about us. You know, so it's really important to be working on your mindset to get you in that space as a creative person, as an actor, as a writer, as a director, as a producer, so that you are around people who keep going, yeah, go, do it, Ruth, do it, girl, you got this. You want to go back to school? Yes, not, do you know how, how long it's going to take for you to finish? Do you well, know? I don't even get into those conversations. Because, yeah, because the truth is, no matter what you do, it is going to take time. Absolutely. And time is going to pass, right? Time is going to pass anyway. So you make a decision about what you want to be doing in this time or with this time. Este, so yeah, absolutely. What you're saying is absolutely true. It's like who you are is a reflection of who you decide to surround yourself by. Um, it's a reflection of your of your energy and your mindset. And um, you want to be surrounded by positive people. You have to be a positive person yourself. And it's, feed it's yourself positive. positivity. Uh, um, you know, the, the wonderful thing that we have right now is the Internet. We have um, YouTube where we can see so many wonderful discussions and, and wonderful uh, panels. Uh, there's a bunch of panels with you on it. There, there's a, you know, then you can start gleaning good, good information and going, yes, I want this. Oh, I, I can listen to Uta Hagen on, on YouTube. I can listen to um, Stella Adler on YouTube. I, you know that if you, if you do the work, if you are responsible for yourself 
and just feed yourself good spiritual stuff, good mental stuff, then even if you don't know anybody in the city, synchronicity will start to take over. And you'll, all of a sudden, you'll go to the store and you'll meet this actor, or you meet this writer, or you meet this person. It just will show up because now you're, you're filling your well. You are evolving yourself in a way that attracts that group. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just think it's important that as, as artists, we find our rightful tribe because especially Latinos, there is stuff you can do. You, you have it in your hand. You know, you don't have to make a bazillion dollars, but you know, you have to love the craft. Going back to love the craft, the work is gonna show up for you. But if you're telling yourself these stories and you're hanging out with, with knuckleheads that are also telling these bad stories, you're stuck, you, you can't move forward. And that is what I love about you is that you are a, a odd duck in the pond and you're just swirling, you're dancing in the pond, you're doing all these different things and you don't care who is watching. And I think that is, that's the best thing an artist can do is like, listen to your music, play your, um, your games and go and find that group of of ducks who enjoy uh, doing what you do as opposed to you trying to conform. You know, I always say, st you're an eagle. Stop trying to be a pigeon. <laughs> you know, that, that is just not your nature. You were not meant to be walking on the, on the concrete. You were meant to soar. Uh, eagles can go above the storm. And I think that's what artists have to take on is go above the storm you know, and, and then you can take on whatever you want. We have to be protective of our time and of our energy también, you know, so, so see, absolutely, yes, yes, yes. I am so grateful that we got this time to talk together and uh, I got to learn more about you and, and just tap into your goodness and your art and your beauty. I thank you so much for joining us. This was just a pleasure and I can't wait to see what you are going to be doing in the next five years because I know it is going to be phenomenal. <laughs>